Oh, oh, good evening. I was just about to send greetings to an old friend. I'm sure modern civilized methods of homicide are much more efficient, but I don't care for them. I abhor violence. That is why on this program we use stabbing, shooting, and garroting only when they are absolutely essential to the plot or when the whim strikes us. Tonight's play begins in a museum, and the title is The Cheney Vase. That's all I intend to tell you. You'll have to figure the rest out for yourselves. And now our sponsor wishes to say a few words designed to send you rushing out immediately to buy his products. But please endeavor to restrain yourselves. I don't want you to miss our story. intend to discuss it any further. I want you to leave the museum this afternoon. Mr. Coulter, the work I did here as your assistant could have been done by a reasonably intelligent child. Leaving won't be exactly a hardship. However, you're rather conveniently forgetting my severance pay. If you want to make an issue with the money, Lyle, I'll be glad to take it up with the board. I'm prepared to go completely into your record during the three months you've been here your inability to arrive even approximately on time. The four days off last month with no reason whatsoever. It was spring, Mr. Coulter, though I doubt whether you were aware of that. I want you out of this building by three o'clock. Yes, sir. How did it go, Lyle? It went, and so shall I. Oh, no. What are you going to do? You got me this job. You got any other ideas? Let me go. Mr. Endicott? Miss Cheney, no one told me you were in the museum. When Francis and I just arrived. Well, now, aren't you looking chipper, if I may say so? Well, of course you may say so. Everyone lies to me and spoils me. I'd be rather put out if they didn't. But the only thing chipper about my appearance is perhaps my suit. And if you'd known me longer, Mr. Endicott, you'd know that that's almost as old as you are. <laughs> well, it's still very handsome, and so is its owner. But now, look here, doesn't this add a touch of color? Hmm? Well, now... There we go. That's very thoughtful of you, Mr. Endicott. Thank now, you. Now, you're not going to run off with one of the museum's treasures in that box, are you? <laughs> No, this is, this is my own last little effort. Francis, why don't you run along and do your errands? I shall need you for a while. Well, now, you know, it's, it's really very good. Yes, you, you know, you've cut this in here beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, it's only a hobby, but... At least no one can say that I completely waste my time rattling around in that old house out in the country. Oh, well, there you are, Herbert. Good afternoon, Monitor. What a nice surprise. I didn't expect you to Wednesday. Well, it was the only day I could come. Have you taken care of that matter as I asked you to? Oh, yes, I'll uh, take care of that immediately, Mr. Coulter. Well, Miss Cheney, it was so nice to see you again. Goodbye, Mr. Endicott. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, what did you want to see me about? Well, Martha, I'm leaving for the coast. Oh, are you really? Uh-huh. Day after tomorrow. Martha, it will be a wonderful send-off for my trip. If I could inform the Board of Trustees that at long last, I've arranged to purchase the Cheney Vase. Oh, no, you're not still at it. No, <laughs> Herbert. You know I could never sell it. It was the last thing of my father's, and I'm going to keep it as long as I live. Oh, and that's going to be a long, long time. But, Martha, you always promised. No, Herbert. That's fine. Well, so you're leaving for the coast? Mm -hmm. Well, Francis is leaving me, too. So I have to manage without Francis. 
And this will probably be my last visit for a while. So, act like a curator. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see those Chinese figurines. No explanation, no nothing. He just fired you. Oh, darling, I'm sick. What is it with that? Do we just have the unlucky touch? Other people get married and save money and have babies and think that this is the best of all possible worlds. Why not just once? Just once can something work out right for me. Will they let you stay in your apartment till I get my check? I'm not going to take any more money from you. Take a letter, Miss Waring. What? A recommendation. At least you can type one, I think, even if our distinguished curator won't feel obliged to. Oh, what'll I say? Just write a nice, kind, enthusiastic letter. Lyle Endicott worked here at the Manhattan Museum of Art as my assistant until uh, uh, May 12th. During which time, he turned out to be a very dependable worker. I hope you don't mind my coming to you. Well, but you see, I'm in no position financially to engage someone like you. Well, there could be other compensations in my case. You see, I could continue my research here in your wonderful library. Oh, yeah, may I? Oh, thank you, Mr. Endicott. Oh, call me Lyle. Well, I... Well, now, look, if I'm going to be taking care of you, you can hardly go around calling me Mr. now, can you? It's very kind of you and Herbert to think of me. But you know that when Francis leaves, there'll be just Bella the cook. And I'm helpless. Since my illness last year, I, I can't get around at all. Well, then you do need a man around the house. Now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, would you be willing to put it on a trial basis? Say, one month. Oh, of course. Well, I know that I won't change my mind. <laughs> well, <laughs> then let's seal the bargain. Lyle. Like another cup of tea, dear? Sitting here gossiping with you isn't going to get any work done. And I ought to have been in my studio an hour ago. Oh, well, then we certainly can't let talent go to waste now, can we? Here we go. We. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! There. Oh, really? Now, you go right on upstairs then and, and uh, get to work, and I'll make all the arrangements about lunch. Oh, now, you're not supposed to bother about things like that. Well, why not? I enjoy doing things for you. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no! Put those somewhere. I'll answer them later. Okay. Oh, Bella, would you clear up Miss Cheney's tea things, please? Yes, sir. But, Bella, it isn't important, one cup. And you so rarely break anything. But, Miss Cheney, I didn't break it. And now, as Mr. Endicott said, it wasn't broken when I had my tea from it, and you're the only one who's touched the tray since. Well, if you took one of Miss Cheney's cups, there's no harm in admitting it. But don't try to blame someone else. Are you calling me liar, sir? I'm merely saying that when one is old as you are, Bella, and is prone to breaking Bella, things. I know you're tired. Now, you've had too much to do since Francis left. So, why don't you go and lie down for a little while? Never thought the time would come. You wouldn't believe me, Miss Cheney. I can see I'm not wanted in this house. 
Fella, wait. Fella. I'm afraid we hurt her feelings. I hated having to worry you about this, but... Well, some of the things that have gone on lately... <laughs> Bella has been with me for 18... Well, almost 20 years. I... I couldn't possibly do without her. I hope she'll stay with me as long as I live. I just thought perhaps... Well, she might need a little vacation. Why don't you tell her to take a couple of weeks off? I'm sure I can take care of you. <laughs> well, so uh, this is where the artist creates her masterpiece. Oh, well, it's a good place for work. It's quiet, it's soundproof. When the elevator's downstairs, I feel cut off from the rest of the world. You keep the vase up here? What vase? With the vase. There's only one, isn't there? I don't want to talk about... I don't want to talk about it. Everybody's always asking me about it. I thought you'd be different from the rest, Lars. Well, it seems a shame to keep such a beautiful work of art hidden away when no one can appreciate it. It is my vase, and I will do what I like with it. Everybody is always telling me what I have to do. Martha, what's the matter? Can I help you? I think if you don't mind, Lyle, I'd like to be alone for a while, please. And just rest quietly. Oh, no. No, I wouldn't think of leaving you now. You need someone to take care of you. feeling today? Well, I'm, I'm sure I'm much better. Good. I, I thought maybe I could go out for a little while into the air. You know, I, I haven't been out of the house for three weeks. Well, now, why don't you go upstairs and try and do a little work? Now, you know how you missed your sculpting. Do you think I could? Why, of course. Why, you were showing just wonderful work before this little setback of yours. Why, that last head you did showed tremendous improvement. Here we go. Up we go. That's <laughs> right. Hold tight. There, now. Why, we'll just have a beautiful one-woman show for you in no time at all. Now, sit right down. That's right. There we go. There we are. Now. I've got to talk to you, Mr. Endicott. Uh, later, Ruby. But later. like that maid. When are you going to get rid of her? Well, as soon as I can find someone who will come all the way out here. Well, Bella will be back soon from her vacation. Vacation? Well, Martha, don't tell me you've forgotten already that Bella wrote you. Bella wrote me? Well, oh, yes. When? Really? Life. Martha, she wrote you in August, saying that it was too much work and that she couldn't come back. Don't you remember, Martha? Well, I know I get confused sometimes, but... this is different. I know. That's why I've been so very worried about you. Well, you've been wonderful, Lyle. I don't know why you put up with a silly old woman. But I do worry. It's wrong. Why is it wrong? 
She's got that vase hidden away somewhere. What good's it doing her? I know, Lyle, but she's a helpless old woman. I do wish you'd give up the idea. Maybe Kothar might know where it is. I'm sure he doesn't. Are you positive he doesn't? Yes. Well, she's got it hidden away in that house somewhere. I may have to strangle her, but I'll get it. Oh. <laughs> Darling, mm -hmm. who's Max Weisenweber? He's one of the most important art collectors in Europe. He's written the museum a couple of times. Kothar seems to think he's a bit shady. Oh? Why do you ask? And if it is a genuine Cheney vase, I may be induced to go as high as 45,000 payable in dollars or marks at Frankfurt. Think of what we could do with all that money. We'd go to Europe, we could have cars, clothes. Where's the book with the picture of the vase in it? Yeah. The Cheney vase is comparatively small, being eight inches high, made of porous sodafine. It bears a simple crimson design on a lustrous natural background. It was discovered by the archaeologist William Cheney in 1881. What now? I think you might start learning German and arrange about your passport. I think we ought to deliver it to that uh, very nice Mr. Reisenweber in person. such a time, maybe a cup of tea would taste good. Nobody told me. I just figured. Well, now that's very... That's very kind. Put it on the table. I... I... I don't remember your name, my dear. Ruby Boynton. Ruby. Where is Mr. Endicott? Oh, I don't know. Downstairs somewhere, I guess. Ruby. I want you to help me. I've got to get out of here and he won't let me. He won't let me see anyone. He's done something to the telephone and I can't call anyone. You've got to help me. Now, this is to my attorney. I want you to take it and make sure that he gets it. Will you please? Please. Allow me, dear. Why didn't you ring? Well, I don't think I can get what I want in this house anymore. Oh, Martha. You know that everything I do here is for you. Why, well, I feel like almost one of the family. Lyle, hmm? this arrangement of ours, it hasn't worked out. I want you to go. Well, Martha, I'd feel guilty if I left you now. Well, you know you're not yourself. Not responsible. Well, I know I haven't been myself recently. But I'm beginning to see everything very clearly now. Well, how can you say that, Martha? When you have such delusions. When you can write such fantastic letters like this. Martha. Real.
Listen, I, I, I'm afraid I got some bad news. I think our little scheme's down the drain. The man from a bank is just here, and it seems like the Cheney vase is in the safe deposit box down there. Well, good evening, darling. How about a drink? I've had a bad day. Why can't just once, just once, something work out right for us? Uh, and now she says she needs a rest and she wants to go off somewhere with me for a month. Where are you going? Well, her sister's got a place up in Maine. I don't know, we'll be stuck up in the North Woods with no telephone or I won't even be Stop able to... Stop it, Lyle. I'm sick to death of your lying and sick of whatever you're doing to that poor woman. What are you talking about? Well, you made application for your passport. You gave the museum as your business address. I did a little checking. And suddenly everything began to fall into place. The way you've been avoiding me. That cock and bull story about the vase being in a bank somewhere. And now you're going off to Maine. All right, I'll level with you. You're right, I do consider you and your morality excess baggage. But since I'm off to Frankfurt tonight at 8.30. What? Oh, yeah. It's been delightful, Pamela, every minute of it. I just have time to go over and pick up the little vase from Miss Cheney's and be off. And I wouldn't go to the police if I were you. That letter of recommendation you wrote implicates you just as much as me. Hello? Yes, Mr. Colfer. I must be patient. I hate to bother you, but I'm a mountain of work. I wonder if you'll come around to the museum tomorrow, even though it is Saturday. Yes. Yes, I think so. Fine. I'll tell you about the trip tomorrow. Mr. Coulter, go to Mrs. Cheney's at once. It's important. He'll be there by six. You haven't got time. It's almost five now. It'll take him an hour to get there from the station. I'll still have time. tried it makes me tell you which one it is. I'm a poor, deluded old woman, probably mad, you know. I wouldn't be able to tell one from the other. You know, they're really rather good, those copies. I'll probably be able to sell them for a great deal of money. And so, another American primitive was born. Thinking our audience might be interested in obtaining a memento of tonight's story, we asked uh, Grandma Cheney to whip up a few thousand more vases. And we're prepared to make an amazing offer on a strictly first-come, first-served basis. Listen closely. This will not be repeated. If you wish one of these lovely vases, just send us your name and address, together with $45,000 in cash. Please do not send stamps or coins. And now our sponsor wishes to tell of an equally amazing opportunity for your benefit, after which I'll be back. My, they did go fast, didn't they? Next week we shall return. Please don't be alarmed. Next week we shall return with another story. Good night.